substance. Of CH4. Got it. Yeah. And actually, it probably is more appropriate to write delta H, F, zero, and then parentheses CH4. But sometimes those thermodynamicists, they can get crazy in there. Yeah, sometimes you write it like this because they're lazy at the right extra things. Yeah. I don't so you gotta think people often see it like that. Will they in, uh, in our textbook? I don't know. I've seen it before yeah. in other textbooks, maybe. Okay. All right. Delta H, F, U.S. Heat of fussing. That's the amount of energy it takes when to get up in the middle of the night when your baby is crying. I don't know anything about that. Oh, I forgot it anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, you have three kids. They're just older than mine. They're just older than yours. Okay, no. Oh, heat of fusion. Fusion, yes. I think yes. it's fusion, fusion, Mr. Sams. Yes. Fusion now, is a funny word. Yeah, this is really weird. This one never makes sense to me, but it is what it is. Those it is the heat. Those pesky thermodynamicists Let's again. Just, yeah, they, they have funny words, things. It actually yeah. means melting. Yeah. I you wish they would have called it melting. Yeah, because fuse to me seems like you're sticking something together. So if I have water. Solid. Solid. And it turns into water liquid. That, of course, first of all, is always endothermic, mm -hmm. so energy is on the side. And I write the word energy here, but this is actually some number. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, 50 kilojoules or something like that. I doubt that's what it is. But it's some number. And so it is the m heat of melting. Yeah. Conversely, you have the delta H of solid. That's the heat to be, heat associated to form a solid. Or to go from a liquid back to the solid. Or heat of solidification. I think I misspelled that, but it says solidification. Solidification. And that would, of course, be the reverse. Water, or any chemical, water liquid turning into water solid. Mm hmm Okay. Then there's the uh, crazy cousin of all the, the, of the melting, boiling, solidification one, and that's the heat of sublimation. And to s if something sublimates, it goes from a solid directly to a gas. It bypasses the liquid phase. Um, and so it, it's just another phase change, another physical change, but there's the heat associated with it. Carbon dioxide is the most common thing that we know of that sublimes, and because you've seen that as dry ice. And so you put energy into solid dry ice and it goes directly to a gas. It doesn't go through the liquid phase. Well, yeah. we can make it. We can yeah. force it. It will do and that. And the sometime. opposite of this, which we did not write down, would be the heat of deposition. Deposition. And that would that's be the reverse. not a lawyer term. That's just this. Yeah, so we won't worry too much about nope. that. They don't, I haven't seen that A-B test. There's a couple other very important mm -hmm. ones. Though. The last two are kind of important. The delta H of S-O-L-N is the heat Heat of, of solution. That's the amount of energy associated when you dissolve something in water. So I want you to write dissolving in your notes there. I-N-G. I think I'm spelled Dissolving. Right, we can do it. That's right. So for example, if I have salt, sodium chloride, and that's a solid, and you drop it into water, we don't write plus water. No, you could write it above the arrow. I've seen that every once in a while, kind of implying that it's dissolved in water. But of course, salt, as we've talked about in our strong electrolyte discussion mm -hmm. in a previous podcast, it breaks apart into sodium ions and chloride ions. And those are going to be aqueous now. So even if the H2O isn't above the arrow, seeing that it's aqueous implies that it's dissolved in water. And is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Um, that one, I think, is endothermic, isn't it? Well, my point is it actually is, yes. Yeah. I do know that. But um, it isn't always endothermic. No. Sometimes you These dissolve reactions, things and they release heat. You just have to look it up on the table, yeah. and you can calculate it from the calorimetry. In fact, mm -hmm. we're going to do an experiment where we calculate the heat of a solution, I think, of calcium chloride. Yep. Another example, let's do calcium chloride for fun, yep. because that's one I happen to know is very exothermic. Exothermic. Yeah, if you guys remember the baggie demo yeah. from the first day of chemistry, of like regular chemistry last year, that's where you had the little baggie, and you held it together with your two fingers, and on one side it was endothermic, one side was exothermic. Okay, those are both heats of solution, just one gave off energy and one took it in. So every process has, is either exothermic or endothermic. Sometimes we forget about that in chemistry land, that we're studying chemicals and how they react, but we forget that every reaction has some kind of an energy component um, going on. Yeah. Okay. All and right. And one last one. more. One. And this will be the last bit here. Delta H, R, X, N, heat of reaction. This is the big one of a whole reaction. The big yep. thing I want you right here is whole, complete, whatever. Yeah. And that's what we were calculating when we did the add the reaction method together. Yeah, or the products minus the reactants, mm -hmm. the, the, the propane with the negative 2,046 yep. or whatever that was. It's the whole enchilada. Right. And so the mistake everybody seems to make is they get the whole enchilada, the heat of the reaction mixed up with the individual heat of formations. And you've got to be careful that you know which delta H you're dealing with. So the first question in a problem that you should ask is, what variety of delta H am I looking at so that I can solve for the other um, varieties yes. of delta and so delta you can H. actualize the delta H is paradigm shift. What? What are you talking about? With the synergy 
A solution. The heat of solution and smart size of the risk management. Mr. Sands, I think you need to ramp this up. You need to think outside the box so that you can uh, really reach this uh, population. Well, you know, I'm a little resource constrained right now, yeah. so I'm not sure that's going to uh, operationalize this mission-critical market segment leverage task. I don't think you're empowering our students right now because you are you are not customer-centered and not customer-directed. Oh. So that you can I'm, reach I'm the trying to push my envelope students. with this best practice as I conceptualize the cash-neutralization-ness <laughs> of chemistry. Mr. Sams, yeah. I think you need to stick with chemistry. I think so. You are a great chemistry teacher. <laughs> Motivational speaker? Not so much. I'm thinking not. No, you know? frowny face. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, you need to, uh, you need to uh, reach a different market segment. Perhaps. Yeah. With my own paradigm. Paradigm, yes. There you go. All right. We'll see you guys in chemistry land. Bye. Bye.